Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about avulsion injuries. So before we get started, we should all know what an avulsion is. And that's kind of hard for me to say <laughs> the more I say it out loud. But basically, an avulsion, simply put, is the action of pulling or tearing away. So when we think about this for our bodies, it's when a tendon separates or pulls away from the bone or the insertion. I chose three injuries for this video. The first one is the mallet finger. And when you look up a mallet, it will look like the little drawing that I drew right here of a hammer. And that is exactly what your finger would look like if you had mallet finger. So this is an avulsion at the terminal tendon, which would be your DIP joint. And what happens is your DIP joint, which is distal, so it is the one that is right here, is bent like this. And because of that, you no longer have any active extension. So in order to correct this, you can use an extension splint for six to eight weeks. Depending on the type of injury and the severity, the instructions that the surgeon would recommend is going to vary. You want to place the finger in extension so that the DIP doesn't remain in flexion. You always want to help the patient go back to a neutral position so obviously your finger is not in a natural position when the DIP is flexed like that so you want to help to unflex it. Depending on the situation surgery may be recommended as well. Moving on to the boutonniere deformity. So the boutonniere deformity is a rupture of the central slip of the extensor tendon. It's always good to know more about the anatomy and the specific names, so I did include it. It's the extensor digitorum communis tendon. The boutonniere deformity can be caused by arthritis, and when you have a boutonniere deformity, you will display PIP flexion and DIP hyperextension. This might be helpful. The reason why this is called a boutonniere deformity is because this injury can be caused by getting a cut at the top of your finger. And what happens is it severs the central slip. So I would imagine getting an injury at the top of my finger right across in a slit that looks like a buttonhole. And that will be the rupture of the central slip of the extensor tendon. So the picture that I drew next to my boutonniere deformity right here may be a little weird, and I'm going to explain this. The way that I remember this is that that is an elevator button, and any button that I press, I've noticed that when I press it, if this hand is a button, my finger tends to go into boutonniere, and I don't know if that's just me but that helped me remember it. So that's what a boutonniere would look like. And as you can see, the PIP is in flexion, which is right here, because that's the proximal. And my DIP is in hyperextension because it is getting extended further back than it should be. So I know that my example is very specific to my life experience. So I encourage you to find another way, if you can't remember mine, to remember the boutonniere deformity. For these avulsions, you always want to think about how do you get the finger back into neutral. So if your PIP is in flexion, the splint that you want to use must put the PIP in extension so it's no longer bent up like this. You want to straighten it. Last but not least is the swan neck deformity. And I drew a little swan so that you can kind of see what the swan neck looks like. And I can't really do the swan neck because my finger just doesn't move that way. But basically what happens 
is your PIP is in hyperextension right here, and this DIP joint would be in flexion like this. A swan neck deformity is a rupture of the lateral slip of the extensor digitorum communis superficialis tendon. And the swan neck deformity is most commonly caused by rheumatoid arthritis. The ugly duckling is about a baby swan who gets separated from its family and thinks that it is an ugly duck because it is being raised around ducks. And as it gets older, it blossoms into a swan. So later, the ugly duck turns into a swan. Later for lateral is how I remember swan neck deformity is a rupture of the lateral slip of the extensor digitorum communis superficialis tendon. Just like the boutonniere deformity, in order to correct the swan neck deformity, you would place the PIP in extension. Now, the boutonniere and the swan neck are both deformities, so oftentimes, even if you go through surgical measures to fix the deformity, you may still have difficulty straightening out your finger. If you leave a mallet finger untreated, the person may develop a swan neck deformity. So those are nice ways to connect these two because both of them have the DIP inflection and then once a mallet finger that goes untreated gets more severe, if it turns into a swan neck, that's when the PIP hyperextension is added on. For these avulsion injuries, it is very common to see splint rings and they are oval eight shaped finger splints that can be used in a variety of ways to keep your finger in extension. So here's a picture of a few designs. So this covers the three avulsion injuries that I broke down for you all today. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for all the lovely comments and I hope you are all doing well. Good luck with your studies and I will see you all next time.